You guys, this is the first and final restock of these specific shirts. Yep. These are selling out like pancakes. Yum. If you don't have this, you're you're missing out in everything. Are you even part of the club? True. Uh, yeah, I'm on the face. I'm, no, 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 not, not you. The, the people. I'm the leader of it, I think, baby. <laughs> My face is on it. So, guys, make sure you get those tees at slupkingdom.com. You don't like ears on it? I don't like to hear my own voice, which is a problem. Why? Because I, f- I feel like in my brain, yeah, yeah. I sound more <laughs> badass than I actually do when I when other people hear uh, it. I, I, it's the same I, way that I view myself. Like, where, like uh, people are like, oh, you know, like, that's sweet. And I'm like, well, no, I'm not sweet. Like, I thought I looked badass, like, smoking cigarettes and, like, drinking my whiskey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, like... Doing my hair and everyone's like, oh, yeah. that, that's nice. That's so cute. <laughs> I don't want to look cute. Yeah, gotcha. The problem. Or right, let's start because yeah, I, there's so many things I want to talk about. I've, I've desperately wanted to be called cute my whole life. You're not well, cute. What babe. were you? There's called? nothing. <laughs> just yeah, yeah, hot, right? No, you're rugged. <laughs> rugged. Yeah, yeah. This, that, but never cute. I've never Wait, been rugged? called yeah, cute. Yeah, lumberjack comes to mind. Male, Web, male big bo- shoulder, male athletic. Body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 She has Michael Phelps shoulders. That's it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ready? Go. Yeah. What's that? Check, check. Oh, don't talk until I bring your name Sorry. up. <laughs> <laughs> so aggressive. It's so aggressive. You know what I mean? Yeah. I forgot to tell her the rule, but okay, um, yeah, I won't talk. But but you just did again because <laughs> we're not starting over. Um, welcome to another episode of Tiger Belly. This uh. is three hundred and what? What is it? Five. Three hundred and fifth episode of this show, and it's like I can't even. What did we? What did we? I mean, how many hours of talking is that? Th- th- thousands. Too much. What? Too much. Way too much. Yeah. Way too much. But we so glad. We so glad you listen. <laughs> I don't know. I just did it that way. But um, hey guys, God, we have a great episode planned for you. We have a great guest. I'm so excited. But I just want to say Happy Fourth of July to everybody. Mm-hmm. Mm. And is that Independence Day? Mm-hmm. Right. That's the same thing, right? Mm-hmm. I love the movie too. Remember the movie? Love born so on good. The 4th of Aliens. July? Well, yeah. it, no, Independence Day. Oh, I thought, you said, I thought you meant Born on the Fourth of July. Much better movie. No, no, no. You think Born on the Fourth of July is better no, than it's Independence not. Day? It's not. What was the saddest thing about Independence Day in your when you watched the movie? I I can tell you. Yeah, I'll tell you what the saddest thing for me was. The German Shepherd. Was it a German Shepherd? Well, I don't know what dog it was, but yeah, there is no the tunnel with with um with um. That's a sad scene. Yeah, but does, he he does, he lives. He does live. Mm. Yeah, it's not such a sad scene. Oh, uh, but when the first lady dies, that's not sad. God, well, you gotta get your priorities. No, straight. when what's his name's wife <laughs> dies, Come on. When Bill Pullman's wife. Yeah, the dies. first lady I just said. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. get your priorities straight, <laughs> what, lady. Um, anyway, um, <laughs> so you know, you know, I'm the slub king, and I do things like you know, people call and they go. Do you want to do this? And I always go, no, usually. Mm. I go, I don't want to do it. But then this show, during the pandemic, I get a call and they're like, well, I got two cooking things. Yeah. Oh. Right? I got um, Nicole Byer's show, yeah. Naily. Na- nailed it. And then I got, um, <laughs> what's it called? <laughs> nailed it. Nailed it. Oh, nailed it. Naily? I thought it was called Naily. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't even remember the show. I don't know what was going on. But, um, but the show that I do remember doing, right, that one was a blur, but the one I do remember doing was a, sh- a show called Fast Foodies, mm-hmm. and it was on True TV. True TV? Yeah. Yeah, and, um, and you know, I'm, like, I love food, obviously. First of all, can I just say something? I went to the South Edge a couple of days ago to get jeans. What's South Edge? Uh, it's, I, I, lighten I, I, us. I, well, I only wear Japanese raw denim. Wow. <laughs> Because I'm fancy. How much is that? Let's just p- put it this way. Okay. You can I only can't buy say one it. pair. <laughs> what? Oh. I, I bought two. With the money that you had? There's no, no, no way. No, no. That's why I, the money that I, <laughs> the money that I, cash I, that I had, yeah. I didn't use it. Okay. I, I, I used my credit card. Anyway, I used to be a 32 inch waist. That's fine. I'm 37 inch now. 30, they do 37? We love them all sizes. Yeah. The wow. show. 
Anyway, I want to introduce the guests. Um, so I did this show called Fast Foodies, and there was a bunch of young, hip, hipster. Are you blaming your waistline on the Fast Foodies? Yeah, I am. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's, what where, that's where I'm getting. That's the intro. That's where I'm going. Yeah. And um, it was a bunch of young chefs, and um, obviously I Googled them before, and like, oh, they're, you know, at that level. Dog, what's up? Right? And so I showed up, and, um, you know, it's also when I see Koreans that I don't know, there's already just, a, there's, I can identify them so quickly. The shape of their head, <laughs> you know what I mean? There's just something about their faces that I go, Korean, Korean, you know what I mean? <laughs> so this, our guest today, a uh, one <laughs> top chef, mm-hmm. and that's like elite. That's the top. That's like getting a gold medal at the Olympics, mm-hmm. if you're a chef. And she's also um, one of the sh- chefs, the best one probably, in the group, 100%. Um, and they're cute, the two other ones. Look at you guys. Yeah, look at us together. Uh, yeah, the white dude, what's his name? Jeremy. Am I, can I talk now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. No, no, we got that's your name. <laughs> Kristen Kish. Yeah. Okay. Give her a round of applause. You can talk now. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Remind me of their name. I, I, let me guess. Jeremy's yeah. the white guy. Yep. Yeah. Justin's the black guy. You yes. loved him. Yeah, I loved him. Justin's great. I mean, you did an open mouth kiss, and it's it's something. To talk about. <laughs> we what do you mean? What do you mean? Often. Wait, wait, wait. I open mouth kissed him. You did. No, because he, wait, this was deep into like the beginning of the pandemic. <laughs> yeah. Right. So he, I could have got another man came home to you. Oh yeah. wow! wow. I'm a betrayal. Sorry. Not the first. Time. I'm sorry. <laughs> but more more sorry that we I could have got you COVID. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I care yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't care if you kiss 20 people. Yeah. Um, but, post COVID. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, w- we'll explain the show. All right. So, Fast Foodies is this thing that I got a call and they were like, hey, uh, from your Instagram, we can tell you like fast food. I was like, well, yes, who doesn't? I like a lot of junk food. And they're like, well, how do you feel about like going on TV with these two other chefs and you just get to hang out, cook some, cook some food for celebrities? And it's like competition, but no one really actually wins or loses. Yeah. And I was like, this is either going to be really good or like the worst thing for my career. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, luckily, it's just fun. Honestly, yeah. th- this is the first time cooking without rules, which mm. is a mm. very rare thing for me. And I think um, I think collectively, we all made some of our best food because of the restrictions that weren't placed on us. Yeah. Well, here's what I liked about it. It's like, first of all, they called me and they said, um, what's your favorite fast food, right? Because they were going to duplicate it. Is that what, du- not duplicate it, but... Copy, well, the the official ner- name. Norm. Yeah, sorry. The official norm is copycat and then remix. Mm-hmm. Yeah, remix. Yeah. So they put their own flair to it, mm-hmm. right? So the first thing I said was Taco Bell. Yeah. Obviously. Mm-hmm. And, th- and they're like, oh, we already did that. <laughs> That's how they, the executive sounded? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> we already did that. <laughs> right? Like, all angry. Right. So then I was like, well, the only thing, and if they said no to this next one, I wasn't going to do the show, which was the sausage McMuff- 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 McMuffin with egg at McDonald's. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. I love that breakfast. You woke up really early that day. I know. He knew well, he wait, was what time do you normally wake up? 3 p.m. Oh. Two or 3 p.m. Shit, really? Yeah, he yeah. woke up uh, McDonald's breakfast time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was he was yeah. in it to win it. Don't they yeah. do uh, yeah. breakfast all day now? They do. Yeah, you just sleep all day. They do. Last night I was going to get it, but I went to Taco Bell instead. Anyway, and my stomach got off. Hold on, no, 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 hold on. Go back to Taco oh. Bell for a second. What's the order at Taco Bell? I'm very, like, um, simple, you know, so... I don't like the double decker taco supreme because it's like they put way too much sour cream in it. It's a lot. It fucks up my stomach. Mm. And it's also I don't need the extra layer of tortilla around the f- shell. I think mm-hmm. it's just very Liberace of them to do that. <laughs> it's like, "Hey, I'm oh, here." Okay. You know what I mean? And they and they're doing like, you know, I don't like it, right? I like simple mm-hmm. old school Taco Bell. So I I enjoy their just their regular taco. I get a Burrito, and I'll get a burrito. Sup- I think well, burrito. Tell her supreme. the special order. Do you know what? Okay, let me ask you. A qu- do, you do you like Taco Bell? I, I do, but I don't go very often. Okay, how? But how old are you? Thirty-seven. <laughs> <laughs> why? No, I'm because I I think age has a lot to do with this next question. Okay. That's why. Okay. Um, I have a trivia. What's the one thing you can order at Taco Bell that's not on the menu, but they'll make, and it's always been on the menu? The Mexican pizza. No. Is Very that one, co- though? I, they took it off. But Don't, can you still order it? 
I've never tried. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. I presume. No, if, I think it was, I, it was I don't an think intelligent you, guess. Yeah. What it was. No, because the Mexican pizza, I think, has elements in it they just don't have anymore, so they can't make it. No, no, but they have tortillas. Meat, it's the, the, the cheese, shell. What's the shell? The, 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 <laughs> the pizza shell part is different. Than, it's a tortilla. It's, it's not. Good. Why are you arguing with the chef? Oh, yeah, no, 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 no. It, 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 Why am I arguing? No, 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 no. It's, This is not chef shit, right? <laughs> this, this is this is poor man shit. <laughs> oh, I see, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm telling you that the shell of the Mexican pizza is something that they don't use in the other ingredients. Mm-hmm. I mean, other um, items. Yeah. So they wouldn't just have it like just in case. Oh no, it's off the menu, but just in case somebody orders it. I, I don't think that saying. that's the case. Do you, all right. Okay. So I don't want to argue with so you, what is it? but it's but well, no, I'm I'm not done with the, your Mexican pizza bullshit. I actually the only <laughs> reason I knew how to say Mexican pizza yeah. was what is this? seasonal okay. ground beef, two <laughs> flour tortillas. No, He's the, right. No, no, the tor- <laughs> fucking you idiots. Don't they have <laughs> tortillas? The t- okay, let me ask you something right now. Okay, yeah. a flour tortilla, <laughs> right, can be many things. <laughs> Wait, please go. No, no, it'll. It's always a fucking flour tortilla. It's always a fucking flour tortilla, right? We know that, right? But it's, you know how like sometimes. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, right? So it's like, you know how you go to a Mexican restaurant, right, Mm -hmm. and you order potato, not potato, not potato chips, but tortilla chips, right? Yeah. Yeah. Some of them are like you know harder, right? Mm-hmm. And then some of them, they'll put two or three of them in the salad or whatever that has a completely different well, structure and crispiness. The corn and flour tortillas. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Corn what? has corn is, has more structure when deep fried. When you when you fry a f- when you fry a flour <laughs> tortilla, <laughs> yeah. it's more light and fluffy. Right. Okay. So but what I'm just saying that the the, f- the I know, but the flour for, for, for the flour tortilla <laughs> in the Mexican pizza is fucking fried. Yes. yes. It's crispy, and they don't Correct. have a fryer. They, they come pre-packaged that way, probably. Wait, Wait George on, is no. trying to fight you. It's made out of corn. Well, you, you know what? You're a producer? <laughs> you're a producer, and you shut the fuck up right now. <laughs> All right? You're not a panelist. You're not a guest. <laughs> oh, and you shut the fuck right now. I know what I'm talking about. I eat a Taco Bell. I, I grew up a vegetarian way. in the Midwest where there was only one thing you could eat at Taco Bell. That's true. He has yeah. a good point. Uh, oh, valid. my God. Valid. All right. Anyway. Seven the, Day Adventist. Listen, fans. You, you guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> right? These people do not. They're ignorant. <laughs> and they don't know what they're talking about. So, fans... Back me up on this, all right? And I know I'm the leader. You guys know I'm the leader. <laughs> Wait, I have a question. Go ahead. Okay, so when you came on the show, I knew of you because of Mad TV, right? Oh, my God. Okay. This is, and then my mom... Di- there's going to be a diss right here. Go ahead. No, 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 there's not. It's actually a legitimate uh, okay, question. Okay, yeah. And then my mom knows you, yeah. which she absolutely adores you. Yeah. So you have a lovely white woman. Thank in. you. She loves you. Say uh, hello, Judy. Hello, Judy. Judy. Say hello, okay. Judy. I love you. Yes. Um, She knows you from... What's the other show? Hawaii Five O. Magnum. Uh, Magnum. Magnum. Yeah. Magnum. Yeah. 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 Ugh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's like it almost felt good. <laughs> you know, it, it would have felt good if you got the show right. Okay, but so, but the whole thing of the ki- what? What do you keep saying? Something king. Some king. Slept king. Slept oh, king. king. Okay, so everyone on fucking social media kept writing it. And I was like, I don't understand. Can you give me uh, a little backstory of what this is? Oh, so, well, number one, I'll just tell you this right now. That means you don't know who the fuck, what kind of show this is, <laughs> and what the show is. You never listen to it. That's your, fine. Your fans are going <laughs> to All right, no. She's a nice lady, okay, guys? So be easy. But my point is, is this, is that <laughs> it was an old joke where I said a long time ago when the whole woke thing came up, Yeah. you know what I mean, that I was the opposite of woke. I'm slept. So then people just start calling me the slept king. <laughs> yeah. He's, and I sleep Cu- a lot cu- as well. Coupled with the fact that he does sleep in. Okay. Yeah, I sleep a lot. Got so, it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that very... Mexican pizza. Go back. Quite literal. Okay. So yeah. you're wrong about it. And I just want everyone to know that. <laughs> so that's that. So I'm going to tell you what's on the menu. That's not on the menu that you can order, right? Okay. And I'll tell you why this makes sense. It's called the Enchirito. All it is, is and it, it was, I think, on the original menu, all it is, is a bean burrito, which they... Or, see... They already have it, right? And then ranchero sauce on top, which they already have, right? So they're not going to be like, oh, we could just make that, right? Mm -hmm. With a Mexican pizza, they don't have the hard, crispy tortilla shell. Wait, what's the 
Did you already tell her the enchilada? I just said enchilada. Yeah, but just what is it? Be- That's it. Beans and burrito enchilada sauce. It's a bean burrito, and they just put enchilada sauce on it in a, in a black. So, as thing. a vegetarian from the Midwest, have you ever had the enchilada? No. Well. Yeah. See that. <laughs> so uh, again, then again, <laughs> I'm going to say this. Ball that reiterates. <laughs> that it reiterates and reaffirms my opinion about you <laughs> and fucking Taco Bell. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I have to say this though, and I'll give you a compliment. <laughs> I met your baby, like him. Shout Cute baby Tommy. yesterday, right? Uh-huh. Like the baby, good job. It's normal looking. <laughs> so congratulations. I thought it was gonna be all fucked up, right? <laughs> Second yeah. of all, I, I'm really um, liking your shoe game. Oh wow! Okay. Oh. Too. What? We were we were having a huge fight upstairs with my niece and Bobby about what? About George's appearance. We were like, George is a handsome guy. And you were like, no, 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 no. in what fucking what world? Guy? Yeah, I know. I think so. He's very handsome. Coming from the lesbian, you have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> All right. You have no room. Uh, All right. <laughs> okay, valid. Yeah, yeah. Valid. Yeah. George coming from the lesbian. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I think you're a beautiful man. Yeah, and also Maybe you're. because he has f- 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 these feminine touches of like softness and kind. You're just kind. Oh. Uh-huh. I just find that you're kind. Oh my god! <laughs> I, 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 I have a feeling that no matter who was sitting there, you would have had some sort of compliment, right? Yeah, hundred percent. Right. I like to compliment but that, people. That, yeah, but that's not real. It is. No, you have to be real. It is. Sometimes you compliment and compliment and compliment because then you just naturally start to think and believe everything you're saying. I, I, okay, that's good. That to be positive person, that's yes. true. But yes. what I'm saying is, is that that's not necessarily a. F- There's when you look at a human being. <laughs> There are a variety of facts and things that are evident, sure. right? You're the type of person that sees the positive stuff. Yes. Like, oh my God, this person's so ugly, but you know, I'm going to say. No, I would never are... start with. In your head. You're no. not saying that. My, I have a you very don't think. Positive you don't... Wait, wait, wait. But no, 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 I'm going to okay. tell you why. Yeah, okay. So, because <laughs> ugly is a word that only should exist if it's a character driven trait. I agree. That's an ugly yeah. thing, right? Like, if you're fucking racist, you're ugly. If you're an mm-hmm. asshole, you're ugly. Mm-hmm. If you suck at being kind to people, you're ugly. It mm-hmm. should never be based off of physical right. traits. Uh, I mean, look, you're the one who preaches hegemony. Is that the word? And hegemony. about how we're, everyone is influenced differently about beauty. And I grew up watching sumo wrestling. Therefore, I find you attractive. Like, I grew up watching Takanohana, Akebono, um, Musashimaru. What the fuck? Great. And they were in the front sumo pages. Sumo wrestling? I've never even of, heard that from you before. Because I grew up in Asia. So yeah, I, they, right. They, That's the they were dating hurtful super thing. models. And yeah. so, like, my, and I watched it with my dad. It was, it was so, when, it's a very nostalgic thing for me to see a fat man in diapers. Yeah. And so, when I met you, I was like, you That's, are. That's Akebono. Hot Whoa. and. All right, so. <laughs> Fuck you, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. You're saying that th- that's me. Look, all if there's another guy they called Pretty Boy, you look a little bit more like him. Okay, look, look. I think right. his name yeah. is Musa Shimaru. It's um, like if I, I was dating Gilbert and I said, you know, I like what? your face because, you know, when I was a kid, I was looking at the National Geographic. There we go. And I saw the, the, the Shelter Island statues, you know, the, the heads that mm-hmm. are on that. Yeah, right? East and the, Island? East, East, East Island. Island. Yeah. yeah, East Island. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Shelter. You just had the heart like, to correct me. Like, yeah, yeah. Shelter like, Island? Yeah, East. What's it? Easter <laughs> Island. Easter Island. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Is that when you're going to diss somebody? <laughs> Get that shit right. <laughs> all right. All right. Okay. It, oh, really? Now I'm going to go back to this. That's funny to you. Uh, look. Oh, look. All, all I'm right. saying you're is not- that. You're not. My idea of hot or what you think is like aesthetically pleasing is very right, different and right. that varies. So she's right. Ugly uh, comes from the inside. You're right. And you know what? I, I, <laughs> because I grew up at the comedy store in the, ni- in the 90s. Yeah. Right. And that was the culture. The culture was just ripping each other apart. Mm. You know what I mean? Right. However, oh God. do you still find joy? Does that bring joy to your heart? Yes. This is good. This is good. I'm, we're turning this podcast into a therapy. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it, that brings you joy. Why? What are you trying to protect or what are you trying to keep at arm's length That's by not, insulting people? It has, it's not, I'm not insulting. <laughs> I'm not insulting. Please answer her question. <laughs> you are insulting people. No, I'm not insulting anybody. You're going to call him a fucking tiki head. I think, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not insulting anybody. All right. It's a, it's a sign of um, camaraderie mm. and brotherhood when you kind of rip it. 
if if so, people go like when I'm in New York and I see like Jim Norton or whatever, right? Look at this fat baby walking down the street. Mm-hmm. And I'm walking down the street. We all laugh about it and we connect when it comes to that kind of stuff. I enjoy it. So does so so if I were to give you a, a laundry list of compliments, yeah, would it make you feel uncomfortable? Or it depends be because okay? some of the compliments that you would say, yeah, is probably not true. Or no, how about they are? Because no, I don't want lies. I, I don't want lies. No, and they're I can not see lies. lies. No, they're, right, right, right. Shall we try it? Lies. Shall we try it? Right. Yeah. So based on the shit that you know about me, yes, and I will tell you if it's a lie or not. Okay, okay. First of all, I think one of the greatest qualities that you have. And I think that it goes for anybody that has overcome anything that is hard is the sense of resilience and sense of awareness and sense of self. Now, that doesn't mean you, everything you do is perfect, but it does mean that you are very self-aware and that you can understand where you're coming from and why you choose to make a change. Yes. <laughs> but that's something that you can say to virtually anybody. That's not true. No. Just, no let me, let me say, can, I, can I talk? <laughs> <laughs> May I? It's not getting ganged up, ganged up on? All right. Not everybody. And it's self-aware. Shelter Island, by the way. <laughs> I, I'm fucking standing by it. I like it. Shelter Island statues, like standing by it. Cool. So my point is, is this, okay? Shelter it's, Island. <laughs> that's your head, and that's what Gilbert. What, to be fair, you, know you do look like. One of those. <laughs> you know what? I accept that as camaraderie. Yeah, yeah it is camaraderie. Thank you. And it's fun, I, right? I, I, I imagine this. Just, just let, let me. Can I talk? Yeah. All right. Imagine this. What if I didn't say anything to you at all? He doesn't like me. I yes. Was, I also just want to add, and this is such like a <laughs> God damn it. this is such a compliment that you I, have I you do it. have that head and you do have Christina Hendricks hips. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've always been jealous of. Yeah, yeah. Girl Can you say He's got big butt. Hips? He's got the biggest butt. So, oh my so oh my if I, if I God. Did, if I go that yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gilbert. Yeah. yeah. Juicy butt. Come on. Okay. I don't want to talk about Gilbert's butt anymore. <laughs> or more, right? we can. It, it is juicy, but nonetheless, I don't want to talk about it anymore. <laughs> I just realized how juicy it was when it's, you did that. It's bad, yeah. Yeah. Like, I would, if I was fucking you from behind, yeah. Yeah. I would want you to push into me with those fucking bubbly mm-hmm. And then the whole time we're like, ah, sh- Shelter yeah. Island. <laughs> shelter Island. Yeah. Shelter. So anyway, um, <laughs> let me go back to... Um, hey, guys, we're going to take a really quick break to share some of our favorite sponsors with you. For hams, 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 what you do, you need to do it. Uh, 100% baby. Uh, for hams, man, you know what For hams is? It's a wellness brand for men, okay? And a lot of my friends need this brand. You've heard us talking about hams and how they're helping guys look their best. And if you haven't, it's time to see what they're all about. Guys, guys, listen, 66% of men start to lose their hair by the age of 35. And once you've noticed thinning hair, it can be too late. Is that hairline slowly starting to move backwards? You're, then you're dumb because y- you yeah. need to do something about, about it. it. Yeah. The best way is to prevent more hair loss is to do something about it while you still have some. Why do guys turn to weird solutions, Kalila, or do nothing when they turn to me- when they can turn to medicine and science? You could be stupid, or you could go to for him. Yeah. Forhims.com is a one-stop shop for hair loss and skin care for men. It's time to write a new chapter, guys. One in which you could possibly have hair. No more <laughs> awkward in-person doctor visits or long pharmacy lines. Yeah. Forhims connects you to licensed medical professionals online. One which can save you hours, completely confidential and discreet. We love science. We love things at work. We love um, the future stuff, man. And so um, bring it in, Gil. Today, Hims is giving you their best offer yet. If you're not happy with your results after 90 days, Hims will give you a full refund. And right now, Tiger Belly listeners can get their first visit absolutely free. Go to forhims.com slash belly. That's forhims.com slash belly. Prescription products require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. Restrictions apply. See website for full details and important safety information. Remember, that's forhims.com slash belly. Better help. You guys, wh- baby, mm-hmm. what interferes with your happiness? My anxiety, my stress, you. You know what? <laughs> What's preventing you from achieving your goals? My anxiety, stress. Yeah. Listen, guys, um, all those things, anxiety, stress, trauma, all this stuff, why carry, uh, why carry that around with you, right? Do what Kalila and I did, and we, are, we engage ourselves with better help, and it's the best, man. It, you, you get... Matched with your own licensed professional therapist. And during the pandemic, we used it and it saved our lives. You connect in a safe and private online environment. It's convenient. You can start communicating in under 48 hours. It's super affordable. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professionally counseling done securely online. And it really is one of the best. Tell them more, babe. 
Uh, my favorite feature is that you can send a message to your counselor anytime. There's a journal feature there and you'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions all without ever having to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room. Um, again, licensed professional counselors and depression, stress, anxiety, anger, all of that stuff, all of the stuff that we need help with. Uh, take it away, Gilb. If you want to start living a happier life today, as a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com slash belly. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash belly. Enjoy the rest of the show. That can be said about anybody. For instance, right, I have a friend who, um, his dad died, right? Everyone's dad dies. My dad died a couple years ago. It was terrible, right? But it's like, I can say, you know what I like about you? Your resilience, that you, you were able to get, go, get through that. Mm. Anyone can get through that. No, 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 but it's specific because everyone with resilience has to ch like channel in and turn on different like knobs inside yourself to get through whatever it is that you are getting through. And that's right. Uh, and not everyone is built like that. Yes, and not everyone they, can do oh, it. Every human no, being no, no, is no. built that way. No, no, because some people actually parlay into something more negative than it is something positive in the long run. Yes. Okay, that's one. Uh, you have beautiful feet. You actually really I don't, do. I don't, oh, oh, and, oh, he has a, a and five I'm, rating on Wikifeet. Okay, 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 five okay, out okay. of five. Okay, I just want to say this, okay? He's nervous now. No, I'm not nervous. Don't look why at my why are you moving? I'm putting my shoes on. No, no, no. You know what I noticed? He was on another podcast. Wait, they pointed out his feet, and then he got, he got weird. Well, his feet it, are actually really nice. When you shape-wise. Have you seen the nail beds? The nail beds need some work. Oh, no. I was like, comparative to <laughs> everything from ankle up, I wouldn't have presumed <laughs> such lovely feet. <laughs> <laughs> <It's actually> <laughs> but why? Wait, hold on. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's unpack this one for a second. Why? You don't have no idea what you're talking about. I think you're a crazy person. I actually, I actually legitimately think you have really oh, nice feet. All right. Here's the facts. Christian Keish. Yeah, yes, what's up? Uh, as a wow. five point, you have like literally a 4.98 rating on Wikipedia. What's I, wrong with your feet? Why don't you like your feet? Because this is a fucking scam. Yeah. It's because we went on to somebody's podcast and I said, can you just tell your fans to give me a high rating on Wikifeet? Oh. So I oh, cheated. I yeah, so I cheated. Number two, the thing you don't know me, if you look up close, right? Yeah. Ask, what's going on with my left foot? Oh, yeah. Um, a lot of very um, possibly edible and cookable fungus. <gasps> Let's see. As a no, chef. I'm going to fuck you. <laughs> I'm going to show you my fucking feet. <laughs> a lot of truffle. <laughs> lot of truffle. Right. So what I'm saying, okay, so the second one, I'm going to pretend you didn't even say. So the first one, the resilient one, I'll accept that one. Okay. Give me another compliment. The self, she also said self-aware, which is the opposite of delusional, which is true about you. You're very, I just you're feel like that's still, yeah, but there's not a specific thing. Like, I, like I'll give you a, a compliment, right? Okay. You, right, <laughs> are probably one of the best cooks in LA right now. Okay. So, okay. Chefs. You yeah. are one of I'm not, probably the but greatest, I'm not. most iconic comedians I and personalities. For, I, I, not to, this okay, is, fine. I'm not I'll accept it. I'll accept it. Right. We're, let's not do this I've, anymore. I watched. <laughs> I don't like this part. <laughs> on Ma I went, I liked Mad TV more than I liked SNL because one, it was on Fridays and yeah. it, was, it was a thing that Ooh. we watch as a family yeah, yeah. over Saturdays okay. and it wasn't as late. And I remember you. Yeah. I remember you. And I don't remember a lot of people. Okay. I don't really care. I just want to correct you real <laughs> quick is Mad TV was on Saturdays as well. <laughs> but it's hey. okay. In, in, I, in, I, in I, 1990? I believe. Yeah, yeah. But oh. I think that you, if you were, if you said that you watched Mad TV, then I know that you were watching Mad TV instead of SNL because we they were on the same time. So thank you. Oh, okay. So <laughs> that's the th yeah, third yeah. one. Listen, I don't want to play this game anymore. Right? What the compliment game? Yes. Yeah, so what I'm saying that let me just say this though that I think that like like for instance back in the day right let's say you had like you go to Alaska right and they have they have these these fishing expeditions. And there's all people from all over the world, right, that go to, the, to make their money during a season to go right. fishing, right? Yeah. They got down these really treacherous, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. boats. And, they, mm -hmm. and there's, there's the fat black guy. There's the, you know I mean, the little Puerto Rican that's blind in the left eye, right? <laughs> there's the uh, albino Irishman, Class. right? There's yeah. all kinds of people on this <laughs> boat, right? And how they pass time, right, is they give each other nicknames, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, whale shit is what they call somebody, right? Yeah. Or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. 
And they all laugh. They drink beers. And it's a way to bond with each other. Right. No, no, no. A hundred percent. I'm not negating that okay. fact whatsoever. What I'm saying is, yeah. is that you have to have a certain type of rapport with someone in order to enter into a relationship. I disagree with you. I don't. <laughs> I absolutely disagree with you. Because otherwise, what happens, yeah. like in the kitchens, right? Yeah. Kitchen culture used to be one thing, uh, right? I have I am very passionate about changing the shit that I dealt with in kitchens, right? Okay. Of the insults and the taking people down or whatever. I don't like it. Uh-huh. And you don't cook happy food and then your yeah. guests aren't happy because your food sucks. A one joke cannot translate to every single person in your life. You can't, it, th- that does not work. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, you're right. I'm not going to go up to an albino dwarf who's homeless on the street and rip him apart, right? I'll give him a dollar, whatever it is. Oh, you know what I mean? I'll be nice. Mm, okay. <laughs> what, you're going to cut that part out? <laughs> I- How many descriptors do you need? <laughs> <laughs> homeless, albino, uh, yeah. poor. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sure. Yeah. That's right. You know, a guy. A the, guy, just yeah, a guy. Just a random guy, right? Yeah. I'm not going to make fun of the way he looks because I don't know him and it's also he's in it. Right. Right. So, you know, but it, yeah, but if I'm like with other people that I feel like they can handle it and vice versa. And here's the deal. You're just, you're proving. You're no, but here's the deal. The girl that I didn't want to be, you know, perform in front of, right? She's like that with everybody. Everyone else is fine with it, right? I'm not fine with it. So maybe I'm not. No, 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 but it's not your problem. Word? It's still hers. Yeah. Because read the fucking room, right? Like you got to read the room. If you go for an insult and someone's like, you know what? Mm, did not like that. Mm. You don't keep going. So that's her bad because she did not stop after clearly you exited out from her presence. What's the kitchen culture like back in the day? Back in the day, yeah. awful. It was. It was very. Uh, it was men. It was sexual harassment and unfortunately right. there, mm-hmm. it does still exist which is a horrible thing which is something it gets me riled up yeah um and it was a culture in which you never really wanted to be there but that's what you thought you had to be in order to be successful which mm. is fucking bullshit mm. you can be nice you run a nice kitchen you can make people want to be there right mm. we spend 20 hours a day at work like you better want to be there mm-hmm. yep. and it actually is more pleasant which i don't understand like angry harassing fucking environments just because it looks and sounds yeah. powerful doesn't make sense yeah so like gordon ramsay is that all just show then or he does promote that kind of culture? i don't th- i don't think he promotes it but i think if you choose to put yourself on tv we all have a responsibility to mm. showcase right you and i can joke with these off and it'd be fine however this is not a private conversation so therefore some things that i would be like you know what that's okay say it or and I'd give it right back to you. Mm-hmm. You can't do that because it's a responsibility if you're going to put yourself out there in a public manner mm-hmm. to showcase something. Because someone in Minnesota, so, someone in say like not Minnesota, like something small, like a town, a town that no one knows about, mm-hmm. who has kitchens that are run like garbage, are watching people like Gordon Ramsay call people idiots and mm-hmm. morons. Thinks they that's think that okay. that's okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. which <coughs> it's not okay. There, no, there's it, there's a disconnect. So, <clears throat> but can I ask you this though? Yeah. I don't think that I, uh, I cuz I struggle with this because mm-hmm. our culture has changed, right? And I've and I've I'm like a tampon of like <laughs> I can't wait to hear this. <laughs> like, I can absorb a lot. No. Heavy flow, <laughs> bro. You know, I I I just be you you're say your plus. toilet paper. You yeah. know, I want to say tampon is that not right? Well, you're yeah. super plus. Yeah. You're super plus. Yeah, I'm a super, super plus. Tampon, <laughs> tampon, Never right? use a super plus. Yeah, yeah. And I could like, <laughs> I could absorb <laughs> massive amounts of like, of hatred. Yeah. And and I did that all my career, right? Like, like, you know, comics coming up to me and going, just want to let you know Asians aren't funny. I don't know what you're doing here. Or whatever it yeah. might be, right? But that's. Can I just say something about that? Yeah. Because I'm similar, right? Yeah. So my threshold for bullshit's very high. My yeah. threshold yeah. for people, like, for, for mistreatment mm-hmm. is very high. But don't you think that you and I coming from very abusive homes, they're exploiting the fact that we I, come. I, no, I'm just saying like that's not something that we should be proud about. I'm not proud of it. That we are. Not, you, that, that, I, I get what you're saying. But my point, though, is, is that that it's a rite of passage. Just in my in my old school way of think, uh, thinking is, is that the bullshit that I endured early on the first 15 years of my career, mm-hmm. right? Of just racism and bullying, all that mm-hmm. stuff, right? Is a rite of passage that other people also walked, right? And also as a stand-up, I, I always attribute it to why I'm still 
here. I'm stronger. You know what I mean? I went through it. I learned a lot. I think maybe I'm a better comedian because of it or whatever. Or I'm more confident. I don't know. I feel like if I didn't go through that, I wouldn't, I'd be a different person today. I think you would be a different person in a much better way. Oh, my God. In a less <laughs> pain way. That was gonna be my question. That was going to be my question. Because it's like we're all going to say, oh, look, you know, I got beat as a kid. Look how I turned out. I turned out okay. And when I really think about it, no, I didn't turn out okay. Mm. Like these things are catching up to me. I could have been a far more actualized human being, less anxious, less pained. And you and I are pained. We live a very pained existence emotionally. And yeah, we made it through, but barely, Bobby. Barely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We go to, we pay a therapist tons of money to get through the shit that we're just talking about. Mm. So here's the thing, like what used to be, right? Yes, you've made it out and it's great. But what used to be, a lot of people haven't made it through, right? Mm. And then oftentimes when we speak, we are not only speaking upon for ourselves, but we're speaking for other people and for the people's voices that can't be heard that potentially did not make it through. Right. So you made it through. You're good. Your career is great. Like you guys are probably I mean, it's, you're very successful. Right. But there's a lot of people who went through that shift and through what you came through that haven't made it. And so I think as we talk about it, it's like, well, I made it. Well, no, because that would be a very. It's true, but it's also a very um, one sided, self fulfilling right. looking glass that you're going yeah. through. Mm. I think so. And do, do you believe then that you're lucky that you made it? I'm fortunate. I am I am fully aware, mm -hmm. very aware that my life is and was set up to set me on the right path. I was given opportunity that allowed me to have to figure it out. I was set along. I was a bowling ball that was like set straight down the alley for sure. But so you don't. Not saying that I didn't go through shit, though. But you didn't attribute it to your talent, though. Um, so there's that's a ver that's a loaded question because as women you're not taught to to say that I I actually did it myself. I never say I'm lucky because I do understand that my talent and the choices I've made have got me to where I am, not luck. I do say I'm very fortunate because opportunities were set up for me greater than some other people. Hmm. So it's 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 a mix of both that have come together, right? Right, mm. and it's going to be solely on me to sustain that, right? To be a good person that yeah. people want to keep working with me and that X amount of shit starts happening. Because I, 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 I just let you know, I know guys that I started with that still are doing comedy. They, they're just not good, right? Sure, they, sure. they never should have done it in the first place. And it's, it's not a, an opinion of mine. It's that the only, like, for instance, your only, your job, your specific job is to make delicious food. Correct. And have people like it, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the cr your criteria, right? My only job is to get a response, a positive response from an audience in terms of laughter. It has to be that. Any other emotion that I evoke doesn't count. Like anger, it, that, that's, that music, yeah, if I was in a punk band or whatever, mm -hmm. if I evoke anger or rage, that's maybe, if that's my intention, that's fine, right? But in comedy, it's one specific emotion, right? And I know a lot of guys... You know, who still go, man, I don't know why. You're lucky, dude. Like, I don't know why I didn't make it, you know? And, I can't, and I'm always like, hey, maybe try it, <laughs> you know? And being positive or whatever. But at the end of the day, it's like, yes, I am lucky and I'm fortunate, right? But then again, it's like, where, do, where is that line, you know? Of? Like, of like, is it my talent? Is it luck? Is it... A combo it's a combination, it's a combination. It's of talent and opportunity mm -hmm. and how opportunity. you choose to do it. So, for example, going getting to Mad TV, right? How did how did that happen? What were the steps? Did an agent send you on a casting? No, it just was um, just fate. I believe everything was fate. <laughs> and I, this is where we human I don't believe in. She doesn't believe in pure fate. fate. Got it. I, I see, live I, in the movies. <laughs> <laughs> I know, the but movies? I, I mean, I, I'm sorry. There, there's serendipity. There's, there's fantasy. There's some fantasy when it comes to my shit. I think that's a lovely way to see life, and I'm not trying to take that away from you, but it's just not true. <laughs> I, I, okay, I, 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 okay, I wanted to say this, okay? Yeah. Fine, but if I tell you how Mad TV came about, mm -hmm. it seems like a fantasy. Mm -hmm. It seems like unlikely almost. Yeah, okay. because yeah, you were an Asian man in a very, very white world. So yeah, well, number it one, they had never really been an Asian guy yeah. except for Steve Park did a season of In Living Color, yeah. but he was hardly used, right? So never been an Asian guy on any sketch show. That's yeah. number one. 
I'm not a sketch guy. I don't know how to, as you know, mm -hmm. I can't do accents. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can't do impressions. I can't do anything. I don't know what a character. You can't do Asian accents either. Yeah, I can barely do Asian accents. You <laughs> yeah, know? he goes in and out. I go yeah. in and out of it. Like I'm, yeah. I'm like, a, I don't have that skill. <laughs> yeah. So that's number one should show you like, he's Asian. Who they're, they're, it's hard for them to get on sketch shows. Almost impossible. Also, he doesn't have the skill to do it. It's no skill. <laughs> right? Right? But what I do have, the so what I only, I have balls of fury. Mm -hmm. Nice. You know what I mean? Like, I'll go into a situation and go, this is going to be embarrassing. And I'm probably not going to be able to sleep for a year. <laughs> but I'm going to fucking make them f remember me. Right? So it's like, here's how it happened. I... I can't get any auditions. No agent will sign me. And my manager goes, oh, she's, we're just talking. She's like, there's, oh, I, I mean, I, there's nothing I can do. <laughs> and I go, oh, all right. She's like, well, there's one thing, but you're not going to get it. And I go, well, what is it? Mm -hmm. She's like, well, you know, I represent Lauren Dombrowski, who it was a producer of Mad. And, she, he, he, she, and I, she goes, I can get you in just so you can practice auditioning, right? So she calls the casting director and goes, you're not going to ever hire this guy, but he's just going to come in and just go through the motions. Please. He's like, oh, we're really busy, Abby. You know, she, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we're, this is not like college. This is the real deal. Yeah. She's can you, you know? So I walked in and I just knew, and, and the, the night before too, I remember be, being, I'd never d written a character or anything. And I'm in the mirror of my bathroom, Silver Lake, you know, making faces. <laughs> what about you? I thought you were there. You know what I mean? And just doing right, right. What? Yeah, my name is Joe. I'm Big Joe. You know what I mean? And just doing like weird things. <laughs> I would go, <laughs> you know what I mean? In the mirror, right? Sign this guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, all that shit, right? <laughs> so I just kind of frantically in the bathroom, right? You know, in this thing, right? Bugs Life was out of the bathroom. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're doing all the Bugs Life impressions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. You know what yeah. I mean? Just all that stuff, right? So that I, um, I go in, and she's like, oh, she's like, are you ready? And there's like a line of 300 people. I'm not, I'm not kidding you. <laughs> waiting, right? So I go, I don't know how this goes, but... And then I just do it. Yeah. I wrote three things. <laughs> hey, man, I'm Crazy Joe! Or whatever, right? And I just remember like the last bit that I did, I was in the corner of this room, upside down, with my shirt off. <laughs> mm hmm this is what I was doing. And I was, and she's sitting there like you. Imagine a guy in the corner of the room upside down with his shirt off. <laughs> going, bah, 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 right, right. And she's like, um, okay, stop. <laughs> I thought she was going to go put your clothes back on, leave, right? Yeah. And she goes, you know, that second thing's good. <laughs> which, which was oh. Crazy I, I, Joe? No, I don't, I, don't, I, don't know what, I don't remember what it was, right? Crazy Joe or whatever, right? Yeah. And I go, oh, all right, I'll see you. She's like, <laughs> Okay, bye. <laughs> so then I get a call. Abby's like, I don't know what, but they want to. She wants to see you again. <laughs> but write to keep the second thing. But write, you know what I mean? Get get rid of the first and third thing you did. Mm. So I, I, again, I'm in the mirror. <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, uh, you know what I mean? Doing all that stuff. And she called me in a bunch of times, like six weeks in a row. And that, but now I'm honing it down. Mm. Mm. Like now I'm keeping like the gut stuff, good stuff, and that. You know, I did, um, I did a Chow Yun Fat, right? <laughs> right? I did, um, it, because I did impressions of people that no one knew what they sounded like. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Which is a clever, so right? They yeah. So I did Kim Jong Il, Chow Yun Fat, and I did Connie Chung. Yeah. Perfect. Right? Oh, that's awesome. So then, um, and then I did three other characters that I just kind of made up. A guy that my brother worked with at Coffee Bean. Yeah. Right? Named Donnie, right? <laughs> yeah. So I just, and then, it then all of a sudden, I, nine times I went in, and then, uh, then the last three were like, I walked in. It was just not one person. It was 16 people in the room. And they're just like, you know, all the producers and the uh, network and people. And then I was like, what the fuck? And then they go, it's between you and Taryn Killam. Yeah. <laughs> and I got it. You know, my point is, is that, you know, if it wasn't f that Abby repped Lauren Dombrowski, mm -hmm. right? I just feel like all that stuff is just, and if I didn't have a casting director, Nicole Garcia, who would could see a glimmer of something and go, you know what? 
let me see if I can open that thing up a little bit, mm. right? So you, all these little things have to be in place for someone like but, me. To, but yeah. that's life, right? Mm-hmm. That's life. So I feel like when you say it's fate, you're discrediting the the skill and the talent and the things that you had and the things that you possess. Yes, Abby, 100%. She was like by far like your guru, the teacher who mm-hmm. got you in. But then after that, it was all you. So in fact, I don't find it to be fate because every little thing that's tied to any greatness that we have is we can we can we can whittle it down to like that one seed of moment but it's not fate yeah it's actual it's actual happenings that are going on i also have this idea that um while that's a really nice way to have gotten your career started like you're like she said discounting the fact that you had inherent talent that down the road it was going to happen for you anyway mm-hmm. It it's just so happened for hard. you then it's in that way. It's so hard, though, to say that. <laughs> it's so hard to say that because literally, and I'm, I, don't, I don't know if it's like this as a chef, but let's say you're, you're in a crew, right? Like you're at a restaurant, right? And you just got a job there, right? And your dream is to be a head chef, right? But you're now just the onion person, mm-hmm. cutting the onions, right? I'm sure there was a day that you sat the, around cutting the onions going and looking at the head chef going, how the fuck am I going to get there? Oh, no. No, no, no. Whoa, okay, so here we go. <laughs> because here's the thing. How, wh- I knew that I had to work my way up. So when I when I graduated culinary school, I started going for all the executive chef positions, which I was not ready for. So that, like, spiraled me into, like, a deep mm. depression, alcohol and drugs, and it was oh, I was an awful human being. Wow. And so... I refused to take any job because my insecurity fueled my ego. So I was like, I'm not going to take any job if I can't have the top job. So finally, when I was ready to like also be made to by my parents to just take any job, start working, is that when I was working, I was picking up and I was I had realized that I needed to be a student in my own life. And so I started picking up and listening to all the different things and hearing the kitchen, figuring out what I liked, what I didn't like. And there are some people that I looked up to that were my bosses that I was like, you know what, I can do a better job at what you're doing because I'm far more aware is maybe not the right word because I wasn't certainly wasn't self-aware, but I was aware of what was happening around Mm. me, Mm. what it looked like to be a good boss, what it looked like to be a good leader and what it looked like to do a good job. And so I was surrounded sometimes by people that weren't good. They didn't do a good job. Oh, I see. But what 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 confuses me about you and what you do is you because like if I gave you ten ingredients, yeah, right. Can you name them? Yeah, okay. I gave you cumin. Is that oh, thing? Yeah, yeah, it's a spice. Yeah, yeah, cumin, right? Jalapenos, mm-hmm. right? Flour. I feel like we're making a Mexican <laughs> <laughs> or an in- <laughs> or an enchilada. <laughs> yeah, <keep going. laughs> right. Shishito peppers. Mm-hmm. Ooh. There we okay, go. okay. Right. And then I gave you Throw um a protein. Right? What? Throwing a protein. Yeah, yeah. And then I gave you chorizo. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But then I gave you chicken teriyaki. Sauce? Sauce or just <laughs> the, the chicken. Pre made? Oh, yeah, pre made okay. chicken yeah, yeah, teriyaki. Tar- 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 chicken, chicken teriyaki. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I gave you like some sort of Indian curry. Nice. Yeah, Let's just, that's enough. Yeah, exactly. A lot of cumin, Seven. the curry. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We're, we're in spice land. Right. right. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, and then I gave you um, kale, mm-hmm. uh-huh. lettuce. Okay. <laughs> kale, one lettuce, more, one more, and then one more. And a cucumber, right? Uh-huh. And I gave you all that in a little plate, right? Uh-huh. Could you come up with something with that? Yes. But because if I get those, I would just probably each eat, eat individual one <laughs> on as different, its own, like on different it's tapas or something, right? <laughs> Right, but like so, but did you always know that you could do that? I started watching cooking at five years old, and it was watching great chefs of the world. So it was like chefs from all over the world uh-huh. of places that I never dreamt, like I could ever dream of actually going to myself. Yeah, or watch, and I'm, you know what? I'm going to say it with confidence and not thinking that I sound arrogant when I say it. When I watch something being done with their hands you can make something or you can cook or whatever. I can watch it a few times and I can pick it up. That's how I learned how to use a knife long before I picked up a knife. Wow. So when I picked up that knife after watching cooking shows at five years old and I took that knife, I knew how to cut. And it was just like, I knew knew where my hands were. I knew where the blade Mm -hmm. was. I knew what I had to do. And so flavor came much later because I wasn't able to physically taste through the TV. Mm. But yeah, I knew at five, it it, it was a trait and a 
something that I could do. That is a yeah. gift because I've watched MMA and UFC and Pride since I was 16 years old, but I never really learned to box. And I thought I could, I thought that my body downloaded that information from having watched it all these years. And I started boxing not that long ago. And it, it turns out. <laughs> You can, you can, no, 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 no
real cacao is very expensive. Mm. And so these, you buy like the whole box for like $2 or whatever. Um, typically it's, it's like cocoa butter that's oftentimes has like cocoa powder in it. And you basically make this brown sweet thing happening. So it's not actually chocolate. chocolate. Right. That's it's, what it is. Yeah. Cocoa yeah. powder. Yeah. But for some reason, the combination of this thing, and maybe it's because this is when my dad was going wild with the beatings. Mm. You know what I mean? Oh, that made me so sad, by the Why? way. Why? Because I, I don't. I, who who look at you? Like, <laughs> I know. What? When did you? When when did we say that I was beat? You said that on fast foodie season. One. <laughs> oh yeah 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So um yeah so I remember like maybe the bars and things like that were things that I liked and that made me feel... Source of comfort. Mm-hmm. Yeah, comfort, yeah. right? So that's why I kind of miss that bar, you know? Yeah. And I, I believe... I, I, she's very talented. You're very talented. But if you had to taste it. Yeah. I know I can taste that in my mouth. I know it exactly. I don't I, think you can. I've had them before. Weird. No, it's very... It's waxy. It's chemically. Yeah, it's there's something like going a, on in it that's magical. Yeah. Well, yeah. oftentimes when you have something like that, you have to add um, different things to... to so the fat doesn't seep, right? So maltodextrin, you need something to like mm. make yeah, the yeah. fat mm. not liquid anymore. That makes sense. Um, <laughs> and cocoa butter, yeah, tastes like chemicals and wax. And mm. that's, that's what, what that that's is. what it is. It's cocoa butter. That, I just you, I never. Knew I can that. make it for you. I know oh. exactly what it tastes like. I'm describing it. Okay, you know what? Like. I'll give you the challenge. Yeah, I'll give you whatever you want. Okay, right? Make me one. <laughs> I'm the slap king. Make me (laughs) one. (laughs) Hey, guys, we're going to take another quick break to share another favorite sponsor of ours. Helix, 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 Helix. Helix, 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 Helix. Helix, 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 Helix. Helix, Helix, Helix. Helix. Okay, so um, my brother, Steve, slept years ago, like 20 years ago, we went to Ikea and I got him a mattress, right? Yeah. And he slept on that for 19 years. And it was like, there was bugs in it. It was rat infested. It was terrible. It was leaning onto one side. And um, so then I go, you know what? I'm going to get my brother. I think you did it, babe. Yeah, I did. I, but uh, can I make claim? Can I claim? You're going to take credit for my I'll Helix cre- gift yeah, to your so, brother? So I sent my brother a <laughs> Helix mattress. And my brother every day thanks me. Uh, just begs. He just on his knees goes, thank you so much. I sleep so good. He sleeps so good on it. He he loves it. He's the best mattress he's ever slept on. Guys, it's so good. Helix Sleep has a quiz that takes just two minutes to complete and matches your body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. Why would you buy a mattress made for someone else, George? With Helix, mm. you're getting a mattress that you know will be perfect for you for the way you sleep. I took uh, the Helix quiz and I was matched with the Midnight mattress because I wanted a medium mattress and also I'm a side sleeper and it works perfect for me. So if you're looking for a mattress, you take the quiz, you order the mattress that you're matched to, and the mattress comes right to your door shipped for free. You don't even need to go to a mattress store ever again. Tell them more, Dale. Dale Gilbert. <laughs> Just go to helixsleep.com slash belly. Take their two-minute slip, uh, sleep quiz, and they'll match you to a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. Helix is offering up to $200 off of all mattresses orders and two free pills for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash belly. Liquid IV. You guys, I hate water. Let's just say I hate it. No, I can attest to this. He really does hate water. Yeah, but you know what? I like to jazz up my water because what I do is I take water, right, and I use liquid IV. It's basically like making the water like special. Wow! And it gives, it makes it more. There, you know, you're getting more vitamins and nutrients. And even their sleepy time one, I don't know what it's called, but the one that makes you sleep, it works so good. I'm a big proponent proponent of liquid IV. I love the flavors. They have flavors like watermelon, strawberry, lemon, lime. Sounds like summer, doesn't it, y'all? Yep. Liquid IV <laughs> hydrates faster and more efficiently than water. That's what I've always known about it. Papa right? needs his electrolytes. Contains five essential vitamins, more than vitamin C, than orange, and as much potassium as a banana, guys. This is healthier than sugary sports drinks. No artificial flavors or preservatives and less sugar than an apple, even. Made with clean ingredients, non-GMO, vegan, free of gluten, dairy, and soy. It is, essentially, if you're just drinking water, you're a loser. <laughs> and if you and and if you if you're drinking with liquid IV, you're a winner. That's a, mm-hmm. and that's yeah. that's fact. Fact. Yeah. 
Go t- Guys, bring it in. Guys, be a winner. Grab your Liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use the code BELLY at checkout. That's 25% off anything you order when you get better hydration today using promo code BELLY at liquidiv.com. Enjoy the rest of the show. So um, I also want to get into like... Um, so how old were you when you were adopted? Four months. Four months old. Yeah. And obviously, because, you know, I grew up in a Korean household, mm-hmm. right? And I always tell eight Koreans that were adopted, I go, you, you had it good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what I went through was like a nightmare. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, I, and, and not that all Korean homes are like that, but I've talked to like other Koreans like David Cho and other people, you know what I mean? And, you know, they've had similar experiences mm-hmm. in a Korean home, right? So your white home that you lived in, mm-hmm. you know, love white people, by the way. <laughs> um, He's like, okay. Your shoe game's off the fucking charts. <laughs> these, but, days. These, these days. These days, yeah. yeah. And your baby's beautiful. But um, my point is, is that you, um, so what was that like, living in a... You know what? It didn't feel bad or different only because the, the, the struggle that I had was an internal one. It had nothing to do with the external factors of my life. My life was amazing. It is amazing. Um, well, let me just get, so your, your parents, okay, what, when yeah. your parents adopted you, did they have children already? Yes, I have a brother who is biological to my mom and my dad. So eight, he was eight older. Years, eight years older than Eight me. years older, mm-hmm. right? And then is there any younger people? No, nope, just us two. Oh, wow, that's great. Yeah. So they adopt you and you're in this house. What did your parents do? Uh, my mom, my mom taught child psychology for a long time. So that mm-hmm. helps. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Um, and my dad was a uh, packaging engineer. Mm. Wow. Yeah. If you're a child psychologist, does that put you in the front of the line in the adoption agency? Like when you fill out the paperwork, are you so, like, holy shit, we need this person? Well, she wasn't like, she's not like a, like child psychologist she t- she taught like early childhood development mm. and she has the the masters and whatever yeah I don't, whatever um she saw she saw like a picture of me somewhere and she was like she belongs to me wow. like it was like a thing no, she I, went chef prodigy she, she, <laughs> <laughs> but that's a whole that's a whole nother thing you're right and like yeah. th- having that idea of she knew that she wanted to adopt Period. She, she so is it fate or what is it? No. Your I adoption, is it fate or just happenstance? I think it's life. No. Mm-hmm. I believe it's this. She Because look what happened. Look when she did that, right? The life that happened. Okay, but I'm going to tell you why I'm the life. I'm not done life. talking. <laughs> show. I'm not done talking. Make the right. carnation bar and yeah, that's make it. Make the fucking carnation bar. <laughs> Right, I'm just saying that she went something inner side inside mm-hmm. her. Right, who does that? Who opens up a magazine or whatever and goes, I, "That's it. That's the one." That doesn't ever happen. You do you online shop? You're like, "That's the shirt." <laughs> like <laughs> everyone does something yeah. like it's that. The difference between sense. like pa- like raw denim or pants and a human being. <laughs> no one just points at a human being and goes, "I'm adopting this one now." I mean, the commitment to it, right? I believe that it's like. Something inside her, the Lord. Yeah, the Lord. Let's call it the Lord. <laughs> okay, let's call it the Lord. Right? The Lord went. <laughs> Chef prodigy. Look at her hands. And, yeah, look, look, look at those. Look at the little long hands. Look at the baby hands, right? <laughs> and your 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 mom went. Oh, something inside me said, right? I think there's something else going on. Okay, but she she did not think I was going to. None of my family thought I was going to become. Who, oh, sorry. I keep hitting it, but yes, we're on the podcast, <laughs> so it needs to be in my face. <laughs> You're doing great. Um, d- no one thought I was going to be what I am. Not even me, right? I-, I messed up so much, like a lot, that I think my mom was just thrilled when I took Wait, wait, you went through a order. rebellious spiffy. I went through a really hard stage of my life, and it was because I was dealing with my sexuality. It was self-identity it was being an adoptee trying to figure out who i was what i wanted to be and the expectations that i felt like i needed to uphold this is great i'm gonna we're gonna talk forever about this now let me ask you this so when did it start these feelings of like you know who am i i think you know what i mean mm-hmm. sexually uh, rebelling all that yeah. stuff when did that happen as i think it was always in me and then i didn't realize it until i could understand what it what it meant yeah so, fourteen, 
earlier. 12. I knew I was gay. I knew, like, I knew I could feel it inside of me. Like, I don't know. When when do you go through puberty? How old? Uh, Six, seven, eight, Twelve. Twelve. As early as nine, even. There were, like, you. Ten, I could 13, tell, right? Yeah. I was looking at things differently. Not in a sexual way as, like, my sexuality, mm-hmm. but just, like, feeling like, oh, my God, who am I mm-hmm. and what I, what am I doing? Mm. So with those with those feelings inside, did you get straight A's? No. You seem no. like you got straight A's. I, I did in music, art, creative. creative stuff. Yeah. Math, science. I nearly fa- failed math and science. So we're the history. same. I, I think. Thank you, God. We're the same. Lord, kind of, we refer to him the as Lord, Lord, Lord here. You and, you and I are the same kind of Korean. What, what is, what? Or people. No, we're just. People. N- no, Korean. Okay. okay. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna specialize it. Okay. <laughs> oh, gotcha, gotcha. Specialize. Yeah, let me specialize it. Okay. Yeah. I just because growing up, my parents always told me that like Koreans, you know, they get straight A, they go to Harvard, you know, that kind of thing. And then as I get older, I meet people like Kristen and David Cho and these types of people that are like minded. Like we have the same kind of like you know, struggles and whatnot. And it's like, we're also creative in, in different, you know, mm-hmm. in different ways. And it just, it feels, you know, like I'm not alone almost. But did your parents allow you to water that creative grass? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. They let me difference. mess up. Yeah. yeah. They let That's me a different. Mess up. That's where you so were not allowed when you, to. So when you, what, like when you were in high school and do you smoking pot? Mm-mm. No drugs? Not in high school. Okay. Cigarettes. 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 Did you yeah. drink? In high school, I yeah. pretended to drink, yeah. <laughs> what, is did you, what is that? I didn't enjoy it, but uh, I like did it to fan. Yeah. Did you yeah. date guys just for the optics of it? Uh, high school, no, because I didn't really, like, yes, I was like, let's get a boyfriend, like, because that's mm. what you're supposed to do. Yeah. But I didn't, it, not because I wanted to live my life as like a true partner to a man. Right. You yeah. know what I mean? It's yeah, just yeah, like yeah. The title of it is what you were going Did for. Did you go to prom or homecoming or any of that? Of course, yeah. With, yeah. With, with men. Right. Boys, I should call them boys. They were Boy, boys. They're boys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so then you're now you're, did you go to college then? I went to my first year of college for international business and economics. Mm. I was nearly failing out of it. I was Ugh. doing horribly. It was awful. And then my mom was like, you're not going back. Why don't you try culinary school? You love oh. cooking. We'll get you out of Michigan. We'll go to Chicago. We'll get you set up and oh. go do you. Oh, that's a, that's a good mom. Great mom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a great mom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you were like, yes. Mm-hmm. So when did the sexuality, when did you come out? I came out at 27, 8. Wow. Late. Was it 28? I don't, yeah. I, yeah, me. I know. I feel like that's you have Google everywhere. <laughs> she yeah. came out. I think yep. it was 28. I think it was 28. 28. Because, but I was already dating women. But here's the thing. Also, my life was never public until after Top Chef, which I mm. never really understood what it looked like to have like a public person. Mm. So how, I was like, how old were you when Top Chef happened? Tw- I, 2014. So mm. how old were you? I don't know. I don't None do math. Us. We all <laughs> failed at I math. I failed at math. I can't. Yeah, I fa- yeah. George. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but wait, were you out by the time you were on Top Chef? No, nice. I came out after Top Chef. Oh, but you you were you already knew who you were. Thirty one. You were thirty one. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Took me a while. Yeah, we yeah. got there. <laughs> Wait. So that's, that's interesting. Wait, I was 31 when I was on Top Chef. 30 or 31. No, I, no it was before that. Okay, well, okay. you said 24. I'm done right? with this. Who, who gives it a shit? It doesn't matter. Matt <laughs> has to be seven fuck? years ago. And you're 38 now? You're 37. 37. You, okay, you were 30. You were 30. You or 29. Compete, you competed in 2012. I uh, competed. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you don't even know what fucking year you do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, anyway, it doesn't matter. Did your mom know, though, when you before you came out, did your oh, mom know? I, let me tell you how okay. I came out to my mom. So right. I started dating someone, and that's why I decided to come out, because I was like, fuck this. I don't want to live in, like, private. I actually love, I'm, I, fel- I fell in love with someone. And so I remember I was sitting in my apartment, and I was laying on my bed with my phone, looking at the ceiling, and I was like, mom. She's like, yeah. I like, I got to tell you something. And, like, what felt like, I don't know, eternity. Mm. Nothing was coming out. And I was like, fuck, 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 fuck. And I was like, I'm dating someone. She's like, okay. And I said, we're going to come home. She's like, okay. And I was like, and it's a girl. And I, like, what felt like she didn't say anything forever. Oh. She was like, oh, well, I, I think we already knew, Kristen. Are you happy? And I said, yes. Mm-hmm. She was like, great. Can't wait to meet her. 
Oh, that's it. So sweet. Yeah. That was it. It's sweet. The movie. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, it moved me because um, my parents wouldn't have done that. Mm -mm, I certainly wouldn't. Shall we play Bec that? Because the expectation you that they wanted for you? You want to replay it? Okay. Dad? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so if you had told your dad that you had, you know, um, 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 lovers, male lovers when you were in high school, how would he have taken it? Oh, he knew. Oh, he did? Oh. Well, he knew that I, I sucked dick before. Yeah. yeah. They're not lovers. Oh, I don't Wait, know. Wait, how do you say that to your dad? Yeah, I would rather call him a boyfriend. I uh, suck a dick. No, no, I, <laughs> <laughs> no, I go. No, I just said, hey, when in high school, uh, where I was young, in middle school, I sucked a couple of people's penises. And what did he say? Well, this is in, like when I was in rehab, right? Oh, so, yeah. you know, he, I mean, he. He laughed when I said that I was molested by a guy with Down syndrome. Mm -hmm. Are you serious? Oh, in he group. Laughed? Yeah, he went into a whole convulsion. Family. My whole family. Your whole family. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. And um, and then everyone <laughs> in the group laughed. You know what I mean? It, it became a thing, and I was like, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> 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 "This is hilarious." You're right. But um, yeah, I, my, my my parents knew because of the dr massive methamphetamine and. Mm drugs and all the stuff that I was doing that they just thought I was going to die. Mm. So, you know, at that point, they f saw me having no future, mm -hmm. right? They're like, this guy can die. Like, this guy has no skill set. He is, something happened at birth. I, I don't know what they were thinking, but they were like, obviously, I mean, I went to three rehabs mm -hmm. in high school and they just kept shelling out this money and they're like putting me in these places. I'm in these, you know, these hospital gowns mm -hmm. constantly. And um, then in my, when I got, did get sober, I lived at home for years. Mm -hmm. I, like the way I behave now, I sleep until three, late at night, jerk off, you know what I mean? Yeah. And frantically, you know what I mean? And just had no future. Yeah. You know, and then I became a star. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, can I, can, I, can I ask you a question? Yeah. And I, I don't know, forgive me if um, you've probably talked about this a million times or maybe you don't mm -hmm. want to talk about it at all. Go ahead. Um, w you know, when you started experimenting with drugs and when it became like an issue and it whatever became an addiction, do you, have you pinpointed what it was that made you want to numb yourself in such a way? Or what you were trying to achieve. I mean, at the, I mean, when you because I started drinking and stuff at like eleven or twelve, right? So it's like at okay. So let's back it up there at eleven and twelve. Why? Because you know I, something happened to me when I was eight and nine in terms of molestation. It's mm -hmm. not really clear to me, you know. And you know, a lot of the things I say on the podcast is f lies. Well, and a lot of it's truth, and a lot of it's embellishments. A lot of it's for entertainment, a lot of it, I'll combine six stories and put it into one story, you know what I mean? So there's a lot of like, you know, it's ambiguous and and, and murky, mm -hmm. right? So, um, but I do know for a fact that something sexual happened to me, and I do know for a fact that my dad, because my mom is missing a tooth here because and because I saw it get knocked out because my dad punched her in the face, mm -hmm. right? And so I remember getting beat by him too, so this is all in my as a kid. So I'm I'm just being touched and beat and all that stuff. So I just I don't remember a, a, the way I was thinking at the time because I'm a kid, right? I just know that when I drank, I snuck into my dad's um, in the garage and I stole a couple of beers and I drank it. That it made me feel great. Mm. It made me feel it mm. soothed something. Mm. It filled a void. It made me and it made me not want to kill myself almost. Right. So it's like. And, you know, as a kid, that was those were like, I can't even believe I survived it, but I did. And, and everyone has bad things that happen. And, yeah, you but know. you don't have to downplay it like that. Yeah. Those things are wrong. No, because I, I, I only say that because online people go, stop talking about it. Like people will go on, on comments, you know what I mean? Yeah. All right, boo-hoo, you had trauma. Let's do some Ooh. comedy, you know what I mean, or whatever. And so I always downplay it so that it's like, you know, mm -hmm. so I don't get those comments. But, um. Yeah, but for for you, for you, Kristen, you said it was right after culinary school where it all came. No, 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 no. It, it it was a little bit before. It was when I when I had the access to start experimenting with things that I didn't have the access at home. Mm. Mm. But yes, this, the 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 struggles of like identity and all that stuff started 
So when your mom said know. that, when your mom goes, we knew this, you know, and you, did you bring your, was it the wife, your wife? No, no, no. It was somebody else. Two exes ago. Two exes ago. So you, <laughs> when you brought her home. Yeah. Did you stayed in the house and whatnot? Yeah. Yeah. And my mom made the one room for us. And oh. Yes. It was so just like cool, when my brother would bring home girls, but sometimes my mom wouldn't even let the girl sleep within my brother's room. Oh, wow. Like, <laughs> yeah. she trusted but me. But you had one top chef or, or two? I had one top yeah, chef. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was doing okay. I was doing you okay. You were killing it. I was trying. I was You're trying. But the, but the struggles, and because the, the most detrimental part of my life was when I was in culinary school mm. because I hadn't quite figured out who I was. I could figure out that I was doing what I liked, um, professionally, but I wasn't certain with who I was personally. And so that's when, you know, like we're supposed to go out in college. You're supposed to go out and you're supposed to drink. Now, I don't drink a lot of alcohol because it doesn't make me feel good. Mm. I'm missing the gene that processes the alcohol. Yeah. So I feel constantly hung over when I drink. But what I realize is that when you do drugs and drink, you can stay out all night and feel <laughs> great. Yeah. Right. And so that that got me into drugs like cocaine? And cocaine. Lots yeah. of cocaine. Yeah. And then I realized, oh, fuck, this makes me feel really good because I have social anxiety. And so then it gave this sense of confidence. Sure. And so then now it was like every day I left the house, it was a shot of vodka out of the freezer and mm. a couple lines of cocaine. And I was ready to go and yeah. off I went. Yeah. Um, Did you get help for those things or are you just kind of quit on your own? No, because... I have high expectations for myself and I, I was concerned about what it looked like to everyone else. And so at a certain point it went from, uh, this is fun. This is really helping me. And then to, Oh my God, what are people going to think of? They're going to think I'm a fuck up. Mm. Holy shit. Get oh, my I life see. together. Yeah. And then that combined with mom and dad cutting me off financially. That was over. Oh, wow, it was wow. over. Yeah. 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 Um, cause listen, I, I want to, there's so much to talk about. I want to talk about the restaurant that you have now. Yes. Um, before I forget, but um, you have a, a restaurant in Austin? Austin, Texas. It's called Arlo Gray. Arlo Gray. Mm -hmm. So what kind of food is it? So it, it's, it is a story of my life. And it took me a long time to figure out what kind of food I wanted to cook because I was cooking for awards. I was cooking for accolades. I was cooking for reaction. Mm. And then not as a like cooking needs to come from like a story. And when I realized the only story that hasn't been told in food is my story. Mm -hmm. That's when I was like. Oh shit, here we are. So I pull, like, make these beautiful pastas that remind me of Hamburger Helper or the oh, Egg wow, McMuffin. Wow. Because it's a way to connect with people. Yeah. And yeah. It's, a, it's a common ground. Yeah. Food is a connecting source of so many different things. Yeah. And so Arlo Gray, basically, I named it after what I would have named my first child, but I don't want children. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's it a great name. Yeah. You know but, what I do that with? My dogs. Yes. I name my dogs all things. That I would name my kids, although our last dog is Stubbs. I don't know if our <laughs> yeah. we should name a kid Stubbs. Is this gonna sound weird? But like, because <laughs> when I'm in Austin, I would love to go, or, go to Arlo Gray. Yeah. But I kind of, and, and I don't find it. Don't take this the wrong way. But I find it that if I go to Arlo Gray, I kind of would want you to cook it. Mm -hmm. That's what a lot of people think. Recently, I've gotten. I, first of all, I hate people on Instagram that are mean. I hate them with a passion. Yeah. And I block every single person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even if you say something like sort of nice, but yeah. like mm -hmm. with an asshole tone. Yeah. Goodbye. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're out of my life. Okay. Um, what, what, did I just say that? No, 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 okay. no, no, no. That reminded me yep. because recently yeah. this person on my Instagram was like, I put, I was on a four day break for 4th of July because I'm here filming a fucking TV show working. Yeah. And they wrote, Oh, kind of like how you were out of office when I came to the restaurant in January and you made mediocre food. You were on vacation then. I was like, hold on. Hold the phone. I, I haven't been on vacation in a very long time. Yeah. I'm also, newsflash, not there every day. Yeah. And you're right. And so my response to them is, well, you would have thought it was mediocre regardless if I was there or not. And yeah. by you saying that, you're undervaluing my team mm -hmm. and the time that it's you're right. them. You're right. I don't want to undervalue your team. Right. But I will say, food is subjective, and you might not like it, and that's okay. Whether I'm going to love it. Not. I'm going to love it. <laughs> well, you're going to love it. Yeah, no, I, I already, we're going to go to our local, I'm already going to, I'm going to love that's it. That's the hamburger helper pasta. Oh, wow. Yeah. We, we have this great, beautiful pasta extruder. We get local grains. We Ooh, run wow. them through the machine. We do this whole whole thing. It's amazing. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just. Oh, you're right. All right. That's you. How you you. They know the, these. Let me just. Okay. These recipes are things that you came up with. Correct. Right. They know what 
like a science, mm-hmm. right? Scroll to the next image, Gil. Sure. Yeah, I want to yeah, see I'm all of it. I'm so hungry right now. I know. It's like I Same. can't even fucking deal with it. Oh my wow. god! Wow. That's a dessert. Is that a fig on top? What is wow. that? Right oh, babe. That's beef. Wow. Beef. Oh, we gotta go there. Ooh. Oh, what is that? That's a scallop crudo. Oh. oh. Well, I do. I do Jesus. have to. I do have to say, for the first like year and a half, it was like, or year only. Only my food. Right. But what happens is that the whole point is you hire other people to be able to do really great things. You hire people that are better than you in a lot of Mm -hmm. ways. Wow. And so my chef de cuisine, now he creates dishes, but he also understands my point of view through food. So he can create something as if it was came right from my brain. Mm. Yeah, but but he still has to go. He's got I still have to taste it. It goes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You're not going to just say if he said, hey, trust me, boss. (laughs) Yeah, you know, I created this strogan- stroganoff. Yeah, right. You're in New York, right? I'm just gonna put it on the menu. He can't do that. No. Right. You have to taste. I it. I have to taste it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I will. I will say because I haven't been to the restaurant in a while because I've been here in Los Angeles. Yeah. Um, he had an idea for one dish, and he did. I I gave him full reign. I trust him though. I trust my team, and that's the whole point. If I if I lived and worked and worked every single day for two years straight in that restaurant training everyone, I better trust him. And if I don't, then yeah. I did not do my job. Wow. Okay. My you bad. Know. We will go there without you. You can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I would like for you to go there with me so I can spoil you. Guys yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> because it is nice because I have been to restaurants like I went to Momfuku where David was there, yeah. and if and he kind of went back and made up some things. It is cool to have the actual mm-hmm. chef do it. You know what I mean? A hundred percent. Yeah. No, there there is something to be said because it adds to when you go to a restaurant, it is not just the food that makes the experience. It is everything. Mm-hmm. So if I can go to a table for two minutes after their meal or during their meal, I just gave them an experience that perhaps Oh, wow. oh do you yeah. do that? I do. So oh okay. So right. So I'm in the restaurant. What if they like I'm sure ninety nine point nine percent of the people in the restaurant that are eating there knows who you are, right? What if they didn't know who you were? Do you introduce okay. yourself? No, no, no. I only go, and some people, I'm going to say this, mm-hmm. and I hope everyone can hear this, Okay, is that some people think I'm like like off put by, like, I don't know. They're like, well, why didn't she come to my table? I don't go to a table unless you ask me to go because I do not presume you want to see me. Mm. I'm not that, that person. Sense. But like, who's going to go? But go. what asshole goes, let me see the chef? No, it's, uh, it's like, hey, if, if she's here, can we meet her? Yeah. Very simple. Or I walk through the dining room. People see me, and then they're like, "Oh, she's here. Yeah. Can I can I say hello?" Oh. I just have a hard I have a hard time just assuming mm-hmm. that someone wants to see me. Yeah, like that's a b- bit presumptuous and mm. pompous. I think. But. Yeah, this is this is probably nothing like that. But I was one time. It's, I don't remember. It reminds me of. But I was. I was at an ATM with Ari Shafir. <laughs> okay. It's and, never never a good start <laughs> to any story. Yeah, yeah. and um. The guy that was behind us, right, to use the ATM, mm-hmm. we turn around and he goes, Oh my God, I'm such a fucking huge fan. And I gave him a hug and he goes, Not you. <laughs> <laughs> and so he pushed me aside. And I remember just when I was flying, like, <laughs> he flew away. Why did I do that? You know Slow I mean? motion. I had to make the assumption, you know. My favorite, um, <laughs> my favorite um, story. That we both experienced together is we were at Coffee Bean down here on Ventura, uh-huh. and some guy we were Bobby and I were walking together, and some guy was like, "Hey, can I get a picture?" And so Bobby's like, "Sure, man." And the guy proceeds to get closer to Bobby, but then hands him the camera because he wants a picture with me. <laughs> and he just was a guy from I don't know where, somewhere in the United States. It was his first time in LA, and he just thought I was pretty and wanted a picture with yeah. a random girl. And Bobby was like, and "He gave me the." <laughs> He gave me the camera, and I, 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 I it was like a hot potato. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You remember that? Yeah, I do, I, okay, I don't oh, wanna, we laughed so I hard on the ride funny. home. Wanna, That's funny. So at the end of our part, uh, can I just say this, though, too, yeah. um, that I don't know it, what it is, but every once in a while, I'll, we'll have a guest on, and it's like the time goes by mm. so fucking quickly. There's so many other things I want to talk I Honestly, and you made me emotional, too, right? There's just something about you Please be a part of our lives. I hope so. This was the whole no, reason be... I said yes to this, so I could get into your house. <laughs> <laughs> Please be a part of our life. <laughs> because I love food. <laughs> I love food so much. And I get so hungry. <laughs> I get so hungry. 
I get so hungry. And, um, you know, I, I also tell the, the, the Justin and Jeremy, I said hi. I, I love will. those guys so much. They're very talented as well. And if what, uh, Justin has a, um, I, I actually got emotional. About food, yeah. 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 And her. <laughs> Let's talk about her and uh, food. But Justin has a f- restaurant in Minnesota. In Minnesota. Yeah. Yep. He's got a couple. And then Jeremy is in Miami Beach. Yeah, Miami Beach. And I, I also want to eat at their places as well. You know, um, very talented. And I think that sh- your show, Fast Foodies, is such a great idea. And um, if it was anybody else, right? If It was one of those things where I showed up and I'm like, I really like these three, but yeah. if like, if it was, if any of them, buddy, was an asshole, or weird, or wasn't personable, I just th- don't think that it would have been as fun, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But just being there with you three, I mean, look at the photos. We were just, there was like, you know, a chemistry. And you came it, home happy. I came home happy, right? Oh, d- did he really? Oh yeah, yes, yeah. He did. oh yeah. Okay. Which is you wouldn't very be rare. here. You wouldn't be here if I wasn't happy. Right? <laughs> 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 I really enjoyed it, you know, yeah. and um. Even when you walked up the driveway, it was like, "Oh, my sister's here," you know what I mean, <laughs> or my cousin or something. You know, yeah. it's you know there, there, you know, there is a. I bond with Koreans as well. Yeah. So at the end of our podcast, oh, we do. A, we actually won't be doing that today because she has a heart out. Oh, oh she does. Yeah. What is it? Uh, it's one twenty-five. So we should get you an Uber. Yeah, well, yeah. But what are we gonna do? Just a, it's a question. Yeah. You want to do it? Are you do sure? It. Just yeah, do there's it. traffic yeah. in. Can LA. you just grab me an Uber? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I'm, I have to go to a preview dinner this evening. Oh, we got to go then. Yeah, no, that's no, what I'm no, saying. No, 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 we're going to do this. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, What's it yeah. for? Is because, it no, honestly, we don't never go this long, sure. but this it's like, really long. Yeah, yeah. This, yeah. yeah, we, we, no, I just got good. lost. You know what I mean? If you want to go, right, you can gonna, go. We have to wait for the Uber. Yeah. All right, all right, let's yeah. do the go, go. So we do this thing where they email us a question and we just give them advice. And it can be unhelpful or helpful. It's okay. some random guy, okay. a fan of ours. Yeah. We don't know who it is. Go ahead. Unhelpful advice with Bobby, Kalila, and Kristen. Hi, guys. I'm a guy in my 30s, and I've been with my wife since high school almost 20 years now. We've never broken up, been together the entire time, and I'm still incredibly happy to be with her. Um, I want to stay with her forever. However, since we got together so young, neither of us had had sex with anyone else. That didn't bother me until recently when I started to get that nagging feeling that I'm missing out experiencing sex with multiple people in my life. I casually brought up the idea of a threesome, and she has expressed some mild by curiosity. But she's rejected the idea and seems content with the status quo. My question is, should I, one, ignore these feelings, two, tell her with more clearly I want to explore a threesome, or three, hire a sex worker once without her knowledge to see if I can get it out of the no. system? No. Basically, should three. I cheat on her? No. Three. Not three. 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 Not cheat. three. Cheat. No. 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 Cheat. None of cheat. the above. Cheat. Cheat. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 my honest thing Right is, all right. I mean, you know what? I'm say, gonna just say this. You know, a lot of our helpful advice we're being too helpful. And can I be the unhelpful okay, guy? They'll be the helpful. You'll be yeah. the yeah. unhelpful. Yeah, 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 opposing yeah. point of view. Don't get angry. <laughs> oh. Will you not get angry? Go ahead. I already heard your answer. Hurt. No, no. I'm gonna get more into detail. Uh, <laughs> all right. I'm saying that you know. Wait, this guy's really gonna listen to you. So like. But and and I really kind of mean what I'm about to say. Oh, dear God. Okay. But it's also oh, unhelpful. Geez. It's unhelpful. unhelpful. Okay, don't do yeah. it. Don't yeah. do I'm it. telling the guy, don't do, do it. it. <laughs> but do it. You know what I mean? <laughs> what? Oh. Just listen to my point of view, okay? I'm and- listening too, okay? So whatever you say applies to me. Mm. Oh. True. You Because as uh, when you are in a couple, you represent one another. Thank with you. The words that Thank you, Kristen. So whatever you tell him mm. to do, <laughs> I can also do the same thing. Mm. No, because... <laughs> it I'll tell you why, because you don't even know what I'm going to say. It, does, it applies to you as no, well. But because we're monogamous. We're, yeah, we're monogamous. Yeah. But we're going to say we're monogamous. Mon- no, but not, we're not just going to say it. We have been, unless you've... I've never... Exactly. I've, so, I've never cheated. We've been monogamous give, the whole give time. Give your advice. I'm going to take that advice. Okay, okay. okay. Justin. But I don't know if I would be monogamous if you were my first one. Okay, but... So what I'm saying is, is that... The reason why I'm okay to be monogamous is because I've been there, dog. What's up? You know what I mean? I've been knee deep in it, dog. My point is, is that <laughs> I've had all kinds of experiences, dog, right? Yeah. So what I'm saying is, is that I know I'm with the best one because I've sampled. You know what I mean, dog? You know what I mean? Also because you fall, you're in love with her. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That's, that's not because you're not just with not, me because you've seen right. it all and I'm just the last one in line. I know, but that thought though? Isn't in my head that nagging thought like, what if this and that, right? 
I don't know what that would be like. But, but, but isn't that, but, okay, with him saying that, yes, the, the, whatever, it, isn't that more of a reflection on, on the current relationship status? Like, I think no matter how many people you've slept with, you can always find, oh, say the grass is going to always be greener. Like, mm-hmm. I, there's one more to see, there's yeah. whatever. But isn't it something about the relationship mm-hmm. that says maybe something else is missing? You know what? That's not yeah. about a sexual relationship. Maybe. 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 Or it's just like, look, if I've been, if I'm 36 today and I've been with someone since high school, that means we've been together two decades. I would hope that this is something that I'm able to communicate mm. to someone that I've trusted for the last 20 years and that I can say, hey, these are my feelings. We've been together for so long. She's likely going to say, I've had similar feelings. Right. But we're not going to go ahead and jump in front of, Every that situation and say, oh, gonna get a sex worker. It's gotta, you gotta give your wife a chance to sort of be part of the decisions that you make because, I mean, they're in right. a monogamous relationship. But if you say, no, you get a sex I worker, changed. I'm gonna get a fucking sex I worker. I changed, I changed. I'm gonna, what, because what Kristen said, I changed. Okay. Right? And this is kind of worse. <laughs> Why did you what? make it worse? Oh, yeah, what I'm about to say, <laughs> what I'm about to say is kind of worse, okay? <laughs> Maybe, right? I believe, and this is a theory that I have, that even somebody like let's just let's look at Barack and Michelle Obama, uh-huh. right? Sure. All right. Let's uh, look at tread that. lightly. I am. Tread, I love him. Huge fan. Yes, I have we a Michelle can. Obama yes, candle we can. upstairs. All right. So what I'm saying is, is um, even Barack, yeah. right? When he, he's not with Michelle twenty four seven, right? Mm-hmm. He might go do a lecture, or you know, what I mean, he'll do something, go on TV, or whatever he might be, right? And I'm sure. Without Michelle being there, there are like women that adore him, right? You can tell, right? That women, you know what I mean? They, they love him. I'm already. Just, no, just let's see what I'm I'm annoyed her. with that because it's as if Michelle doesn't have the same thing that surrounds her. And, 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 right. And, and, and she does too. And I, both cases. Because she's hot. In both, in both cases, okay. right? I'm sure Barack sees a beautiful, attractive woman and goes, what would that be like? Yeah, in their are, head. We all. Right. No, look at that fit photo. Look no. at that. I okay, mean, yeah. I just love them. So. I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not saying I love them as well. I'm just saying that you know, right? Some white girl, right? Why are we using by, Barack and Michelle Obama? Yeah, we should be using like. I don't know. Gilbert, do you have someone a someone way shakier? I do. I'm what, no, I, I think that ev- no, I wanted to use the prime example. Okay. Right. I wanted to use like you know Look how he's biting his bottom lip. I just right, right. He's thinking about the white chick that's in the audience, <laughs> just staring at him. The teleprompter. My point is, is that I Ooh. think that all, even you, even you, Kristen. Yes. Even though that you're married, okay. right? Every once in a while, you'll see a woman that's very attractive, right? And you'll think, just, just let me finish, yeah, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And think to yourself. What would that be like? All of no, us do. It, human nature is yes. That's what we're t- I'm telling this guy. So I'm just saying it doesn't matter. This is a positive thing. But here's the thing: it's not that I, I don't necessarily think. Oh, what would it be like to sleep with them? Yeah. It's not like that. It's it's a it's a, it's, a, it's a, there's a there's a wall of disconnect because when you are in a relationship that is fueling every aspect of who you are and what you love, mm-hmm. here right? we go. It's not saying, "Oh my god, you're so hot, I want to sleep with you." Yeah. yeah it's yeah. it's wow. That's the difference really between guys beautiful. and girls. I yeah. Think. It's it's well, guys it's are an different. Admiration of beauty. Are it's guys not, different? Yes, cuz yes, you're thinking yeah. with your penis. Gilbert. You're leading with this. Yes. Yes. Hey, yeah. I lead with my foreskin, so. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're thinking about sex, we're thinking about like a beautiful human, mm-hmm. right? And yes. Oh there my is an ad- God. You think you're at some ethereal fucking. I mean, it's true. You yeah. guys don't have a single thought in your brain. Like anything can make you come. If I, uh, women, if right. we're not in the correct mindset, it's over. I yeah. can never get there. Ooh, no. who? <laughs> get in line. Get in line. <laughs> Cry me a river. Wait, what, so what was the advice? To there is no gentlemen? advice. Fuck that guy. <laughs> Good okay, luck. You would all luck. say don't cheat. We would all say don't, don't cheat. cheat. And, actually, and I'm but, saying, I'm saying. Careful, I'm going to do it. Uh, all right. <laughs> what are you going to tell us? Don't cheat, but suffer. <laughs> suffer. There you That's go. Life. That's your options. Life is suffering and suffer through it. <laughs> Let's give her a round of applause. Chris, yeah. thank you. Everybody, thank you so much. You were so good. Thank so you. good. Thank you. So good. Thank you.